I got green and I got blue and every day there's a little less difference between the two so I belly up and I disappear well I Okay. Sure, share a little something with you here. What do I do? All right. Um, something I learned a few years ago. First, I'll, I'll uh, point something out. I did a I did a video probably two months ago about my uncle that passed away. He had a stroke. And he died of a stroke. And um, since then, the um, he had no wife, no children. So he, the, there were two heirs to his estate. He has a considerable estate, nothing to laugh at. Uh, it was basically his two brothers, my dad and my uncle. And um, pretty good chunk. But you figure two people, 50-50, which is what it was set up as. What could go wrong? Uh, this thing's completely gone off the rails. The um, some shenanigans with the asset or uh, the estate in the beginning. There's some things questioned, no accountability, some things missing, whatever the case is. And um, now I've got my uncle withholding a lot of the assets, and I splitting it up with my dad. So it's, it's just gone nuts. And so what has happened now is you have, you've, um, uh, their, their relationship as brothers is over. Okay, it's split the family. And may, and maybe down, you know, years later, maybe it'll be, you know, something will come of it. But it was, it's, it's, um, the cut's too deep. Let's put it that way. Terrible thing. But it is what it is. If you're going to leave your family anything, make sure there's detail. I mean, they had a will and all this kind of stuff, but. There's, um, this was just, if it ever finishes, I'll do a video on it, how it came out, but this thing just went completely off the rails. And now you have, you have a, a family that's broken up over it. Um, but the, I, I bring this up. There's a pretty sizable chunk that they're basically fighting over. And split down the middle, I mean, it's a blessing. I mean, it's, it's a, it would help both. It would still be a considerable sum. Um, like I said, then they could do whatever they want, whether they get their families or whatever the case is. But two people, good chunk of money, split it down the middle, still plenty left, plenty to be great, life changing, and all that stuff. So you think it would be a blessing, it's turned into a curse. Um, but the crazy thing is, had he left them nothing. They'd still be brothers. Figure that one out. Like I said, someone's decided not to let go of everything, and it's caused all this fuss, and it's just out of hand. Um, anyhow, this kind of really not have, have to do with the video, maybe in a certain way. But I learned years ago. I'm 49. I learned this in my 40s. I didn't learn it in my 30s. I, I, this was a this was a main point of my misery in the 30s, typically with girlfriends, relationships I was in, and I realized. See, we've had for two month and a half. We've had this tension in our family, so I can see it's everyone's you know, on edge. It's been a real hell over here. But there, I'm gonna speak in a real general sense. There are two kinds of people, okay? And sometimes I consider myself one of these people. But there's times when in the past when I've gone, I've been one of the other 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 ones. You got your you got your basic people that are just soldiering on, doing their thing, their work, their job, working with their own issues. They've got their little boat out there in the rough seas of life, just, you know, rowing away, doing the best they can, making their inch or two a day, you know, and life is pounding away on them. But they just, they're busy. They, they know what their job is to keep that boat afloat, keep moving forward. And they're focused on that and doing the best they can. Then you've got people that are drama queens. They've taken their little dinghy 
they've thrown the oars overboard and they're spinning in a circle and they're screaming how bad they got it, and they want to come tell you about it and hang on to your raft okay now like I said there's been times where I've been guilty of this when I was younger but as I get older I can see these things now um, I said like I realized this in my 40s um, but you'll have people that come into your life I I, I I typically stay with my own, do my own thing, okay? I don't have a lot of contact with a whole bunch of people until I go to my job at night. And I like it that way. Um, but there have been people, and you, you've all had this, where people will, will come to you with a problem and unload it on you, okay? And basically, they're loading up your wagon. Because what happens is they're getting all of this off their chest, and you pick up some of it, okay? They, they, they actually feel better after they've unloaded it on you, but then you end up picking up some of it. You pick up some weight that's not yours, okay? This typically in relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, that kind of thing, husbands and wives. Now, this this is this could be your wife, your husband, your children. Yeah, it's, you're invested. It's gonna, you know, but you get a lot of people that that will bring and unload stuff on you. Now, there's nothing wrong with someone telling you their problems. And yeah, they do feel better after they get off their chest. What's wrong is you picking up the weight. You have to learn how to hear people that, okay, you know, you can be encouraging where the case is, but I'm not picking up the weight on this. I'm not investing in your issue. I've got my own. My plate is full. You know, everyone's got their problem in life. You don't have a franchise on it. Whatever the case is. I didn't used to do this. I used to try to help people fix it for them. Hey, well, maybe do this or that, blah, blah, blah. Um, big waste of time. But you, you'll, you'll, you see people that will, um, it's like this is their thing in life. They always have some sort of drama going on. And I've had, I've had uh, family members who had you know, some major thing they bring to you and unload it on you. And now you're kind of invested in it because you're worried. Whatever. Yeah, you need this, this, and this. Meanwhile, they walk away feeling better. You're still digesting this whole thing. A few days go by. And they, you see them and they're on to a new, they got a new drama. Hey, I'm still trying to figure out your old one. You know, what are you going to do? Oh, well, that's, you know. And they come to load a new one on you. And I used to carry this stuff around with me. And so I'm sitting down one day with my mom. She figured this out at the same time. And we were dealing with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of family stuff going on and all this just terrible time. And we're sitting there thinking, not a single one of these issues belonged to me or her for that matter. None of this was mine. I didn't do the thing. It's not something I did. It's not something I'm responsible for. All I did was listen and I guess unwittingly chose to invest in it and become part of it. I don't do that anymore. I have a lot of friends that have problems, this and that. Things happen. I know that. You know, give an encouraging word or whatever. But I do not invest in their issue. I do not. If I if I have someone in my life who's bringing me their drama and it's affecting me and I can't stop it, I get that person out of my life. I don't need it. That it's not good. See? So as, as you get older, oh, by the time you're in the 40s, you should have this figured out. Now, if you're one of those people with a drama, this ain't going to make any sense to you at all. Sorry. But the next time you find yourself, whether you're bummed out or something's going on or some stressful issue, all, I always do this right off the bat. Wait a minute. Is this issue mine? Is this actually my monkey? Is this, is this uh, oh, no, this is theirs. I just happen to be a witness to it or somehow they told me about it and it's kind of, a, but it's not mine. It's not mine physically. It's not mine emotionally, spiritually, whatever the case is. I'm not invested in this. Yeah, I might be a witness to it, but that doesn't mean I got to take on the weight. See? Now, some people might be better at this, but I was always one of those where it became part of me. They're, they bring their th stuff and load my wagon, add weight to it. What the hell? So, as you get older, if you haven't figured this out yet, the next time a problem comes your way, or you find yourself worried or concerned about something, ask yourself, how would you find out about it? Is this something that actually happened to you? Is some something someone told you about? Is this actually someone else's problem? You find a lot of times something you're worried about, it's not even yours. Especially when you got a girlfriend or something like that. I mean, every week it's a new thing or whatever the deal is, but 
you kind of get over that. But I find a lot of times where I've had employees who bring me all this stuff, and I'm, yeah, I'm concerned about, wait a minute, this is not my problem. I'm not paying these people to come bring me their weight. Anyway, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but the uh, don't pick it up. I mean, yeah, you be, protect your protect yourself from that because you find a lot of times something that you're dealing with, some issue in your life, really is not yours. It's something someone brought you and laid in your plate. Give it back. Don't pick up the weight. I learned this the hard way. But boy, it sure simplifies life as things come your way and you start identifying these things, saying, oh, this ain't mine. Hey, good luck with that. God bless you. I wish you the best. I'll pray for you. See ya. Anyhow, God bless you. Love you. Sister Lisson, what your daddy said. Don't be ashamed to think that I. That old motel room in Texas, Arkansas. So I'll take.